So you're thinking about shooting a live action remake of the classic 1933 film, King Kong. It's long been a favorite of yours and you're thinking, you know it's time to give it a new look. Well, before you roll cameras, you might want to pre-viz your shots. Now you could storyboard your shots, but storyboards are just static sketches of a given shot. A pre-viz is an animated clip that's much closer to your vision as a filmmaker for a given scene. Well, we've got a great pre tool at our disposal with iClone. Let's take a look at how we can use it. Now, if Peter Jackson had been fortunate enough to have had iClone as a tool, the pre of his version of King Kong might have looked something like this. Now let's take a look at the script for the same scene and see if we can revision those shots using iClone as our previs tool. Now we want to gather the assets we'll need for our scene. You can take advantage of the largest online 3D asset platform, Trimble 3D Warehouse, to get any model you need. You can simply type Empire Building to navigate tons of available models from global content providers and it's all free. Simply download the model then load it into 3D Exchange. With one click you can save and send the model to iClone for use as a prop. You can also delete various parts of the model in 3D Exchange if you want to. We also went online and found some images that I think we'll be able to use for uh, background plates, as it were, to modify our sky domes to create uh, the city look and the city backdrop. Also at the 3D warehouse, found a biplane. I've modified it here a little bit, added some particle effects, some machine gun fire, and some machine guns, all in iClone, and that'll give it a little bit more realism, which uh, we may or may not need for previous work. Uh, also we need some avatars. I've mocked up a little pilot avatar here. Of course we're going to need Fay Ray and we'll need King Kong. King Kong is from the uh, Wild Animals Volume 1, I believe, the gorilla. It's been modified in the new pipeline so it will animate just like a uh, standard avatar. Uh, that I had a motion path right here that I added. It's a circle and uh, you could add a camera and do a, what we would probably term a dolly shot with this motion path. So another option for my biplane shot might be adding a camera and parenting it to the motion path and uh, right here it is. And now uh, what I like to do is simply uh, animate the motion path and it's always a good idea. I'm going to turn on control D and have some dummy props here. I've got a dummy prop right here that I have labeled camera look and the camera on this motion path which I'm calling dolly shot is looking at that particular dummy object which of course can be turned off and I can then, of course, move that anywhere I need to where I want the camera to look. And once again, even though you see it's casting a shadow, I'm going to hit Control D and that will go away when I do my final render. So now, if I choose, I can animate this particular path. And now that camera is going to do a, a dolly shot. 
and uh, we might want to play with the focal lengths. We might want to uh, adjust the zoom ratio of that camera. So uh, let's take a look at the lens of the dolly shot and uh, we might want to be a much tighter frame. So once again we can zoom in if we need to reposition where the camera is looking we use the dummy object which is the look and I can move it around and now when this camera starts moving it's going to move around here and now when the plane comes by I may want to uh, whip a zoom and uh, we can adjust that dolly shot again going to lens I'm going to double click here on the timeline put a keyframe down and now right here I may want to go back to a 25 millimeter lens let's say uh, and so as it comes over we zoom back to reveal the shot and of course tweaking and adjusting that and once again maybe adjusting our look at uh, we can reposition that any way we want. So that's another possible shot that we could easily use. And once again, you might want to select those keyframes and adjust the curves. And I'm going to select, you may not be able to see it, I'm going to select ease in, ease out. And now that zoom will be a little bit smoother and have a nice uh, smooth effect at the beginning and the end by selecting that transition curve, smooth in, smooth out. So that's another possibility. So once again, you can lay down your shots and then switch them right here within iClone itself, which gives you a lot of possibilities too. Now, of course, you can then render this out. Uh, I prefer to render each shot out and then edit it in my nonlinear editing system, but uh, there are a lot of ways that you can do it, and obviously you have a lot of options. That's the beauty part of iClone.